Uh, Fantastic game by our team today. Uh, certainly excited by the way uh, all of our guys played. I thought it was a, um, a really, really dominant performance by our program, by our team, by our seniors. <coughs> Jordan Morgan had a fantastic game. Mike Wiley, three touchdowns. Uh, to see our seniors do that uh, was pretty awesome. There's about 13 guys that were on the team in 2020 that are still remaining. Uh, to be able to have them walk out with a win like today was was a great one. And uh, obviously can't say enough about uh, Tetaroa McMillan, 266 yards receiving. Um, Tanner McLaughlin set the single season tight end record, I believe, here uh, today with his seven catches. Uh, two touchdowns. Noah threw for 526 yards today. I think that was our single game record. So all of those things uh, in turn were just a fantastic day. Uh, defensively, we took the ball away three times. Uh, Dalton Johnson uh, got an interception. The Gunnar Maldonado got an interception. And then Jacob Kangaika recovered a fumble. So, you know, it was one of those games that our guys just played fantastic ball and um, had some uh, – had some short fields, capitalized, had some long fields, drove the ball. Uh, so just really proud of our team. We'll start with Justin and then Michael. Uh, Wiley and Gunner uh, pretty much said that Noah and T-Max connections like professional backyard football. How would you assess the connection that they have on the field? Yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's something. Uh, they kind of know where each other are at all times. And I guess it's not hard to know where Noah is. He's in the pocket. But – uh, no one knows where T-Mac is at all times. Uh, he's running around and, uh, you know, whether we're scrambling or whether we're on time, I think that, you know, as Noah said just there, you know, he goes, he's been doing this since eighth grade together. So clearly there's something to that. Uh, when we recruited them in 2022, that was a huge part of it, their, their relationship. Uh, and uh, we felt like if we continue to stay strong with T-Mac all the way through, in the end, um, he was going to play with his buddy. And uh, I think it's worked out well for him. And why do you think the passing game was so effective? We got good looks. We got the looks we wanted. Uh, it's been pretty effective all year. Uh, I just felt like this. we had some opportunities of some plays that we wanted to hit on. And uh, we got the defense that we, we wanted when we called it. So we executed well. We, we had good protection. Noah did a great job dealing with some of the free rushers that did come up in his face. He, you know, he was able to stop and pop and hit Tanner on a touchdown on a, on a bootleg. He was able to manipulate a defender on a screen. He was able to get the ball out to Mike Wiley versus cover zero blitz. So, uh, you know, the same screen that Mike scored on last week, he scored on this week versus the same defense. So, um, really, you just kind of hit on some things that were really, really good. And uh, that, that was really the difference in um, a, probably a 300-yard day and a 500-yard day. Michael and then Jason, you, you've talked about the build ever since you've been here. Never – uh, set specific goals in terms of number of wins in a season or whatever. But here you are uh, at the end of the third regular season with a nine and three record. Could you have imagined that that was possible <coughs> this quickly? And what do you think has led to that? Well, I think the biggest thing is you know we, you know when they when when Dave and Dr. Robbins interviewed me for the job, uh, I didn't say that I wanted to like just win five games or four games. You know I had high aspirations for what we were going to do here. Um, if I didn't think we could win nine games, um, I wouldn't have moved my family here. You know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to win. Uh, what we learned, I told our team this last night, that we're the seventh team in Arizona football history to hit nine wins. Um, that's been only done six other times prior to this year, since 1930. So now it's our goal to get to 10, which has only happened three other times since 1930. And uh, if our guys can continue to believe and trust the process and uh, keep getting better. I think we can not just do that one year. I think we can do it each year. Jason and then Brian. Uh, you talked a lot about culture. Uh, what is a game like this overall? I mean, especially with the game and all that. Just talk about how you build the culture. Yeah, you, know, you know what? It's a it's a word that everybody uses, and I you know I see it like culture before winning, winning before culture, culture before talent. Talent. I, I don't know really. I just know that if you have great players that believe in what you're asking them to do. And you have great high character kids that are believing in what you're asking them to do. Uh, just watch the guys on the sideline and how much joy they have and watch them play and how much joy they have. And I think if you play with joy, you're going to win. And that's where I think our culture has really been about family, about joy. And um, they play for one another. And that's 
the really the biggest thing for our program was we wanted to recruit players that are of high character, recruit players that love the game of football and uh, love each other. And um, we're a very close knit team uh, with the uh, coaches and players alike. And I think from that, you could see they, they love playing for one another, which is probably the biggest part of our culture. And then one more, just how important in a game like this was it? It seemed like you rotated a lot and tried to play a lot of guys. Was that something that you actually put effort into, or did it just kind of happen that way? Yeah, I think, well, defensively, always. We're, we're a huge rotation team, as we know. So we played, I think last week we played 30 defensive players. I'm sure it was similar to that. <coughs> Offensively, uh, we're not big rotators. But um, – we wound up at the running back position we are, but DJ couldn't go. So we needed to rotate all three running backs to make sure Mike speedy and Jonah, and then Jonah got a little dinged up at the first half. So he couldn't go very much in the second half. I think he only had one snap and then receivers, um, you know, T Mac and Jacob and Montana are able to go. They usually go. And then if they, you know, tap out for a play or two, then it'll go uh, Malachi, AJ or KG. And what's going to happen is I think a guy like KG sees that, and then he now sees what he can bring to the table uh, now that Jacob obviously only has one game left with us. Brian and then Troy. Jed, what, what did you see from the defense after that first drive as far as adjusting to what ASU was doing with the run heavy attack? Yeah, I, <coughs> I think really ASU adjusted too. Um, you know, they played with a tight end at quarterback that first drive, and that was hard to tackle. So we had to make some adjustments with – who we were going to have in the who we were going to have in the game, what fronts we were going to play against that. Um, you can't really just play traditional over and under fronts with uh, your standard four down group. So we went to a five down group, uh, went to more of a run heavy defense. We brought the safety down to about nine yards depth rather than 14 or 15 to add him into the running game. Uh, and then we started getting them to play a little bit more traditional. Uh, and then when they put Rashad in, it was more traditional offense and, I thought our guys did a great job there. Troy and then Doug. Defensively, you guys have been getting better and better each game now. Just can you talk about the job Coach Nance has done in the buying you've seen from players? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe he's not one of the 15 semifinalists for the Broyles Award, uh, the best assistant coach of the year. I don't know if anybody statistically has made nearly the jump that he made. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Um, in my mind, it was a situation where – he has done a, uh, just a fantastic job of getting our defense better every single week, as has the entire staff. And um, <clears throat> from the back end, uh, the emphasis from Coach Richardson and Coach Cecil and Coach Akina to getting the ball and getting after the ball, the amount of coverage, the design we're doing there. And then the way the front's playing with Coach Kifusi, uh has done a great job with the D-line and then Coach Nansen coaching the backers. Um, it's just been a it's been a heck of a job by Coach Nansen, and hats off to him. And I'm not sure 15 guys have done a better job than he's done. And what do you, what do you make of the impact Noah's had on this team and his progression throughout the Yeah, I think it's a full team. Uh, I, I think our whole team has just gotten better every week, and I don't think um, I think Noah's done a fantastic job. Um, but I also know that uh, I think we have two great quarterbacks, and if uh, either quarterback that was playing, I think, was leading this team. Um, we've just uh, we managed to be in a situation where Noah got super hot uh, with a super hot hand and uh, was able to just continue to just move the f ball up and down and up and down. And uh, that's enabled us to be able to have this six-game win streak. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Doug and then Michael for our last question. Is the Gatorade shower kind of a shock to the system after the game yeah, I wasn't ready for it. They just got me, but it was all good. Did you get one after this game last year? Yeah, probably. I can't remember. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. And just one on Noah. Just how rare is it for someone so young and with his experience level to be so poised? Yeah, I think that's where <coughs> it's where he separates himself is his poise. Uh, he certainly has uh, shown, you know, throughout his career as a high school quarterback, and then last year every opportunity he had in practice. Uh, he just plays with incredible composure in the pocket, poise in the pocket, balance in the pocket. Uh, and when you have that, uh, you, you know, really when he comes off the field, he barely ever uh, – I can't even get him to smile. Finally, we went up 59-23 with three minutes and 17 seconds left. I said, you are now clear to smile. You know, and uh, finally he did. But I was, it was hard to get him to smile there. He's so locked in during the game.
Final question to Michael. Um, as we're coming out the field, we were talking to Dave, who's in the room, and asking him about the possibility of another contract extension for you. And he said, we want him here for a long time. What are your feelings about that? Yeah, that sounds good to me. That's up to Dave. But sounds good to me. I'm certainly all for it. All right. That's our time. <laughs>